guys, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at the age-old power recipe for almost any motor and that is cam, springs, and boost. And it doesn't matter whether you apply it to a junkyard motor, your existing motor, or a crate motor. If you combine those three things, good things are going to happen. In this video, we're going to take a look at a very successful recipe that almost guarantees success. Of course, I'm talking about cam, springs, and boost. And in this case, we're taking a look at an LS motor, 4.8 liter to be precise. We're adding a cam, in this case, a stage two turbo cam from Brian Tui Racing, the associated dual spring upgrade that goes along with that camshaft. And in the turbo side, we're taking a look at an S475 Summit Racing Turbo. Now, obviously, there are a couple of other things that you have to have with this combination. You have enough, have to have enough fuel flow, which are injectors and fuel pump in case when you're putting it in the vehicle. Also, intercooling is a good idea and having the right octane or fuel, which we're using E85. So what do you say? Let's take a look at what happens when you add cam springs and boost to an LS. Okay guys, we're going to jump right in and demonstrate the <laughs> now, what should be fairly common knowledge for all of the LS guys. In fact, not just for the LS guys, but basically this thing carries over to every engine family out there. So the way to make power is to take a stock motor, whether it's from a wrecking yard or something you already have in, in your vehicle, and add a cam and springs and boost. And there are other ancillary parts that you have to have too. Naturally, you have to have, to have enough fuel. I can't believe how often I get the statement or question, hey, well, how much can you run with just an all stock motor? You know, stock injectors, stock everything. I'm like, no, you don't do that. That's not something like you can run something with a stock camshaft and it will work fine and you just add boost, but you can't do that with stock injectors. The turbo motor or any motor, whatever the power output is, has to have enough fuel flow to support that power output. So larger injectors are mandatory. To feed those larger injectors or feed the higher power level, a bigger fuel pump is also necessary. So those should also always be on the list for any kind of turbo upgrade. So what I'm going to show you is where we ran a stock camshaft, we upgraded the camshaft, and then we added a single turbo. And there are lots of different combinations that will work. In this case, we used a Brian Tooley Racing stage to turbo cam and it worked very well not surprisingly with boost it worked very fine na as well there are a lot of other combinations i have other videos up showing the for instance the brian tooley truck norris cam or the torque cam various different kinds of truck cams lots of different cams you can use a number of different even factory cams now we're starting off with basically the least powerful of all of the factory ls cams in this case the lm7 it's also shared with the lr4 and the early six liter truck but it's the mildest of all the cams, but you could also make fairly good power with that if you just add boost. But we'll show you how big the gain is by putting any kind of performance cam. Again, it, again, in this case, it's a, a stage two turbo cam. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about what might be different choices for you. But let's take a look at our combination. This was a 4.8 liter. It had, in this case, this was the, the test motor that I'd use over and over again. It had JE Force pistons. You could get the same results from any 4.8 uh, from the wrecking yard with a flat top piston as long as you go ahead and um, take the steps necessary to put ring gap in it so that you can run lots of boost with it. This was basically, uh, otherwise it was a stock 4.8. It had a stock set of 706 heads. We did have valve springs in it because when we upgrade the camshaft to the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 cam, you have to have valve springs that will work with that kind of camshaft. Um, we ran this thing first NA with long tube headers. We had Snake Eater Performance 100 and, uh, 150 pound injectors or 1500 cc injectors. Again, we had enough injector to step things up, and especially because we were going to be running E85 once we ran boost. So that take that requires even more fuel. So when you step up to your injector size. Just figure that you're going to go oversized in the injector. That would allow you to not only run more power and more boost, but also different kinds of fuel. So we ran this thing with the bigger injectors, but it had a stock truck intake manifold, a stock throttle body, stock 706 heads. It had a little bit higher than stock compression, but not dramatically so. And run first with the stock camshaft. Um, the LM7 cam for those guys that are interested in the specs, 466, 457 lift, a 190, 191 degree duration split, 114 degree lobe separation angle. There's a little bit of adjustment there depending on what year it is, but that gives us a pretty good idea. This thing had over 20 inches of idle vacuum. And for those guys that are interested, I also did cranking compression tests. 
um, and it had 200 psi of cranking compression. So run in this manner, our our you know slightly higher compression stock 4.8 liter produced 344 horsepower and 345 foot pounds of torque. So here's what happened when I installed the um, Brian Tooley Stage 2 camshaft. We could take a look at the specs on the Stage 2 camshaft. It had a 605-598 lift split, a 226-231 degree duration split, and a 113 degree lobe separation angle. Cranking compression was a little bit lower with this camshaft, 177 PSI. Idle vacuum was between 15 and 16 inches. Um, now we could have spent maybe more time optimizing the idle, but that gives you a pretty good idea on going from a 191 cam to a 226 cam, what happens with idle quality. It definitely affects it, obviously, but there's a big change in power from this camshaft. So we went from 344 horsepower up to 414 horsepower. Peak torque also picked up from 345 foot-pounds up to 365 foot pounds and we we basically equaled or gained power everywhere from the stock cam from about 3500 on up and we showed a loss in power below that point and one thing that i found out recently is the difference in power between the stock cam and whatever aftermarket cam we're running in this uh there's a big effect from the header that we're using so if we run a long tube header which we did in this case i think that this one was an inch and seven eighths Yes, an inch and seven eighths uh, with extensions and mufflers, at least that's a little bit better. Um, but if we simulate a full exhaust, the difference in the camshafts down low is a, a little bit less. And obviously on a stock 4.8, an inch and seven eighths header doesn't need to be there. We could get, get away with a lot smaller. But let's find out what happens now when we add the turbo to this combination, because we're doing cam, springs, and then turbo. Now that we've illustrated what happens when we step up in cam timing on our 4.8 liter from the factory LR4 camshaft or LM7 camshaft up to a stage two turbo cam from Brian Tooley Racing, let's take a look now at what happens when we add boost because that's the recipe is cam, springs, and boost. So we've added our cam and springs and shown what it did to the naturally aspirated combination. Now let's throw in some boost. In this case, boost came from an S475 turbo. And as we've talked about many times on the channel, that's about a thousand horsepower turbo. And so if you're looking for something that's going to be, you know, up to there, that's the kind of turbo that you'd pick. If you want less boost and less power, obviously there are other choices like the GT45 that you could pick, but we ran this T6 S475 turbo from Summit Racing. And even though we didn't turn it all the way up, there was the possibility Given the big hot side on that S475, we were, we were using a 4.8 liter or a cam 4.8 liter that, that we could have got this thing to a thousand horsepower if we want to. But I just want to demonstrate what happened when we ran different boost levels because we know what happens when we run lots of boost. When you add more boost, obviously it adds more power. But we our uh, turbo combination consisted of the stock exhaust manifolds feeding our Y pipe. We had the V band flange going to a from a V band to a T6 adapter for the turbo. We had the big exhaust on the turbo. We had our air to water intercooler, and as always, we had our two Turbo Smart wastegates on there. And here's what happened when we added boost. So, this is what happens when we added 9.4 pounds from our S475. Our power picked up from 413 to 622 horsepower. As you can see, uh, torque was way up as well 533 foot pounds from 361 or 60, oh, 365 foot pounds. So again, torque is way up. We didn't load this quite as low, but even down at 3,500, there's about a hundred extra foot pounds of torque. So it worked out really well. Here's what happened. Um, the nice thing about having a turbo combination, obviously, is the ability to turn it up. And we did run higher than 9.4 pounds of boost. Here's what happened when we turned it up. 
this was 11 pounds. And again, you can see that we had 11, we had more boost basically everywhere. That's why we're having these railroad tracks here. So our power went up uh, over 650 horsepower to 670. Here's what happened when we step things up even further to 12.8 pounds. Again, we're just we're just stepping this things up in um, sequence here. We could just keep going if we wanted to keep running more and more boost. So this was over 700 horsepower, 709 or 10 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 648 foot pounds of torque. So this is obviously a good little uh, 4.8 liter, and it goes to show you what happens when you combine uh, this. This one had a forged piston in it, but it started out as a wrecking yard motor. We've run this kind of combination a lot with either wrecking yard 4.8s, wrecking yard 4.53s, uh, or wrecking yard 6 liters, all of that stuff. And this is the great thing. When you were talking about not very much boost, I mean, only 12.8 pounds, and how far you can take a cammed LS motor and add simple, you know, a, a reasonable amount of boost. All of this testing was run on E85 with our air to water intercooler, and we could go a, a, a long way with this combination because we had already changed the ring gap with our forged pistons. And even with stock pistons on a 48, we've taken them to 12, uh, took the big bang motor um, over 1200 horsepower, and we didn't have to stop there whether <laughs> we weren't at the limit the power limit of the of even a gen 3 combination so it worked out very well so here's the recipe cam springs and boost like from this s475 and you got a winner let's get to our conclusion okay guys what do we learn in this little adventure running our brian Tooley racing stage 2 turbo cam on the 4.8 liter both naturally aspirated and with boost well we learned the following thing and that's fairly obvious if you add a camshaft to an ls and then add boost obviously good things are going to happen now the takeaway isn't just that the not surprisingly enough the brian Tooley racing stage 2 turbo cam works well with the turbo which it does but there are a lot of other cams as well if you check up on the site i've got videos of running the truck norris truck truck cam, some of the other truck cams, the factory LM7 or LR4 camshaft, an LS9 camshaft, heck, all kinds of different cams. If you add a camshaft to the combination and it makes more power naturally aspirated, it's going to make even more power when you add boost. Remember, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.